Okay, cool. All righty. Yes, Christmas has come and gone. <laughs> Hopefully this works. There we go. It has come and gone. But, and we look around and well, we still have the decorations up in our church. It's only the day after Christmas right now, right? Uh, but normally, you know, we don't always have church immediately. You know, Sunday doesn't always follow Christmas every year. It changes every year based on the calendar, right? So, but today, because it's the 26th, we still have the decorations up. Uh, and they still look pretty nice, right? But how many have started taking decorations down from their house already? Nobody? Well, we don't have a lot of decorations in our house this year because we have a 120 pound, 110 pound, 120 pound Anatolian shepherd that uh, was adopted in April and we didn't know what he would do to our decorations. So we just have a tree up with some lights, but most people have trees and decorations up and there always seems to be kind of a little bit of a letdown after Christmas, doesn't there? Is it just uh, my family that thinks that? I mean, the, I mean, you know, the decorations start coming down. You, you no longer hear the Christmas music on the radio. Of course, my wife's favorite station plays Christmas music up until New Year's, right? Yeah, I think they usually do. Anyway, uh, but no longer do we have the Black Friday pre-Christmas sales. What do we have now? After Christmas, right? The, the junk that people didn't want to buy is now available to buy at half price or less, right? Because they got to clear the shelves for Valentine's Day stuff. <laughs> That's what they do, right? So the tree is going to be removed to the attic if you've got a plastic tree or to the basement in our, in our case. Right now our tree is still up, but eventually it's going to come down. So the sad thing is, and although we, we talked about, we saw this in this video this morning, that Christmas is over, but it really should be along with us all year, right? However, the reality is there's six thoughts I want to share with you today, and then I've got a little uh, object lesson to share with you, which I usually, I don't do a lot of object lessons in this church because you guys see me do this stuff all the time, but we've got one for you today, and I think you'll like it. Uh, it's, yeah, Christmas is over, and the six thoughts I want to share with you today, the first one is, Jesus is still ignored by the most of the world, ladies and gentlemen, even though, even though Christmas has come and gone, right? Let me tell you a, a story here. Now, I don't know if this is a true story, but it kind of gets the point across, right? There was a wealthy European family that decided to have their newborn baby dedicated in their enormous mansion. Dozens of guests were invited to the elaborate affair, and they all arrived dressed elegantly in their suits and their stoles and their mink coats, right? And they deposited their wraps on a bed upstairs. The guests were entertained royally. There was musicians and strolling magicians, if you want, okay? They were really going to just celebrate the birth of this new baby that this erudite family had, and they wanted to share with the world. Soon the time came for the main purpose of the gathering, the infant's ceremony. But where was the baby? No one seemed to know. The child's governess ran from room to room, looking upstairs with a desperate look on her face, saying, I, I don't know where the child is. Everyone searched frantically for the baby. Then someone recalled, oh, wait a minute. I remember the baby was on a bed. And sure enough, buried beneath a pile of coats, furs, <laughs> and stoles, right? The baby was underneath all of that. that they, they, they basically neglected the baby, and they almost smothered the baby. He was okay. He didn't die okay. But, you know, the object of the celebration was overlooked. Almost. Sometimes that's the way it is with Christmas, right? People... You know, they, they forget that it's all about the birth of Jesus. Now, we have atheist friends that say, oh, no, it's a pagan holiday. That's why there's trees and things like that. Well, maybe. I mean, maybe that part, right? But as Christians, we celebrate God with us, right? The birth of Jesus. So that, and that's what it's all about. It should be a celebration all year that Christ is with us. Not just as the babe in Bethlehem, but as our Savior and Lord, and we're going to get to that in just a minute here. So as we can see there, you know, people are saying, where is the baby? Well, the baby Jesus should be with us all year long, and 
Uh, unfortunately, Jesus is ignored by most of the world. But not only is Jesus ignored by most of the world, the USA is no closer to Christ than before. This is a sad reality. Even uh, in 2013, when Billy Graham was 95 years old, uh, he passed away in 2018. He was 90, uh, 94, I believe he was. Uh, I don't do the math there, but uh, they had a, his last birthday party, a last public party for him when he was 95 years old. And there were major guests that were there that you would know. Sarah Palin was there. Uh, a few Christian artists were there. Even some secular uh, musicians were there. But hundreds of people came and they well wished him. And he did a recorded video over the last year of his life. And this is what Billy Graham said about America. He says, our country's in great need of a spiritual awakening, he declared. There have been times that I've wept as I've gone from city to city and seen how far people have wandered from God. Now that's sad. This is a man that dedicated his life to proclaiming the good news, the gospel, to everybody. And of course, he did it in America, but he, he did it around the world, but he did do it in America, and he really, his heart was to see America saved. And when I say America, I mean America, not just, you know, one or two parts of America, but all of America. Billy Graham went into, he went into the inner cities to share the good news of Jesus Christ, and still, we have turned from Christ, unfortunately. We, we, we see that with, uh, with crime in the city, racial hatred, I mean, if, if, the, if the USA would just come to Christ, many of the problems we have today, I think, would be solved. Now, I'm not saying we need to make a law that everybody should worship Christ. No, it's got to be from the heart of people, right? Once, you've, once you're from the heart and you have Christ living in your heart, then the laws that we enact would be good laws. Amen? Laws that would reflect our heart towards Jesus. So... Unfortunately, though, America is still no closer to Jesus than they were, um, even after Christmas here. And all this has gone on. We've seen Christmas cards being sent, trees up, you know, decorations all around America on TV. All the movies are out about Christmas. And still, after Christmas is over, people for tend to forget that Jesus Christ was the reason for the season, is the reason for the season. Well, not only does America know closer to Christ, but you know what? Here is another sad reality here. Many church members still do not know Jesus. Some people just grow up in the church, and that's all they've known. I was that way with uh, my upbringing. You know, it wasn't until somebody invited me to this church where I found out the good news of the gospel, and I turned my life over to Christ. My favorite book by Charles Dickens is A Christmas Carol. I've read most of his books. They're very hard to read because he writes in the old English literature, right? And I, I find myself like reading through A Tale of Two Cities when I read it years ago. Every second word I had to look up a dictionary. What does he mean by this word, right? Charles Dickens really knew his language. But A Christmas Carol, you can understand most of it. There's a part in the Christmas Carol when Scrooge is going to be visited by the three spirits. Do we all remember this? Even if you've never read the story, you've seen the movie of, of or know it, right? The ghost of Christmas past, present, and future, right? Well, when the ghost of Christmas present arrives, he's not in the room. There's a bright light coming from the other room. And Scrooge sees this when he opens up his bed curtains. And he, he goes to the light, and this huge ghost is taking up the entire room, and he says, come in and know me better, man. Come in and know me better, man. What does that mean? Well, the ghost of Christmas present wants Scrooge to realize that in the present, we could be generous and open-hearted, right? Be willing to share what we know about a life that has lived for God. Scrooge was told he'd be visited by three spirits, and, she, he, and he should have expected that. He said, no, no, I don't want, to, I don't want that to happen, Mar Marley. Don't, don't let that happen. But no, you must have the spirits coming. And sure enough, the spirits come one at a time. And each time they come, he's kind of surprised until he gets a little, you know, 
the last one here, but, the, in, but this one here, the ghost of Christmas present, he goes in and he sees this giant spirit basically filling up the room, and he says, come in and know me better, man. Now, we cannot change the past. We can plan for the future, but right now, we are living in the now. Amen? Okay? We must be as generous today as Jesus is today. What do I mean by that? Well, Jesus is willing and able to forgive and invite into eternal life anybody that would want to receive that on his terms. Well, the ghost of Christmas present there is saying, come in and know me better, man. Jesus Christ is saying, come and know me better, right? He says, you know, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What does he mean by that? He's saying that, you know, we don't have to work for our salvation. It's been accomplished by what he did when he came as a babe in Bethlehem, grew up to be a man, and went to the cross for us. Jesus is generous. The ghost of Christmas present was generous, right? But Jesus is generous. There's a lot of Christian analogies throughout the, A Christmas Carol. And uh, anyway, so I think, though, that church people, people that go to church, need to come and know Jesus better. The more we know Jesus, well, first of all, I think when it comes to that, then we're going to be able to proclaim him to our friends and family and change the United States and, and then the world. So come and know Jesus better. Accept that precious gift that he is offering today. It wasn't just offered once and it's over. It's offered daily. We can know Jesus more every day through scripture and through prayer. And God will, God will let us realize and learn more about his son as a result of that. All right. The fourth thought is, it's Jesus is still not Lord of many lives. Today in Sunday school, we talked about having no other gods before us and don't make a graven image. And yet, people claim to know Jesus, but he's still not Lord of their lives. One of the things I love about the, uh, what Pilate did during the crucifixion, he wrote, Jesus, King of the Jews, in Hebrew, in Greek, and in Latin. That's right. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. He, he wrote it in the language of religion, Hebrew. He wrote it in the language of science and technology, Latin, Rome. And he wrote it in the language of philosophy, the Greeks. Jesus is Lord of all. He says, what I have written, I have written. So, we need to remember that Jesus is Lord of our life, and he should be Lord of our life every day, not just bowing to the manger scene as the three kings, that, well, we think it was three kings, we're not sure, as the Magi did when they came and presented their gifts to him, though, right? So know Jesus better and make him Lord of your life. And uh, the fifth one is, Many are still unprepared for Jesus' return. Let me read you Titus 2, 11 through 13. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and in a godly manner in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of your great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, eager for good deeds. People are not ready for the Lord's Lord to come. How do we know they're not ready? They're not saved. I... I know I've heard people say, oh, I wish the Lord would come tomorrow or today. Well, I don't want that wish. I mean, I I'm prepared for him. You know, nobody wants to die, right? We're all going to die. That's the appointment we all have. Okay? But, but we, we need to be ready when it's time so we don't fear death. And how do we get ready? We put our faith and our hope and our trust in what Jesus Christ has done for us. 
He is the rock of our salvation. Amen? Without Jesus, we're lost. We're lost. So yes, we should be ready for the Lord to come. But I don't want to hasten His coming yet because there are still, and that brings me to verse 6 here, many of my loved ones that are still lost. Many of your loved ones may still be lost. I don't know. How do I know this? Well, because I look around and I see people in my family and the way they're living and, you know, that they've basically rejected God and his gift. And I did that for years. I didn't know about it till somebody had the courage to invite me to come and listen in at a church service. Now, it's not a church service that's going to save you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But the gospel is preached there, here, when it, when it happened. And that's how I became a born-again Christian, because somebody had the courage to invite me to come to a church service. Um, we can do that. It's no problem to invite people. They may or may not come. That's not up to you. But you can pray for them. Amen? We need to pray for our lost brothers and sisters and friends. Right? And when I say brothers and sisters, I mean literal brothers and sisters, but also any family member, any extended family member that does not know Jesus. We need to pray for them and put them on our prayer list this year. There's a great, you know, easy way to do that is we, we put the, uh, the prayers on the uh, website every week, but you know, have your own prayer list. I know we have one at home. Uh, Denise. She takes those Christmas cards we get from people, puts them up on our refrigerator, and that's a reminder to pray for those people daily. So, you know, you don't just look at the picture and throw it away. Well, we got rid of last year's, but we got the new ones up now this year, right? And so that's a reminder to pray for those people because, you know, even though they may have come from Christian families, I can pretty much guarantee not everybody in that family is saved. A lot of people are just going through the motions, and Jesus does not want us to go through the motions. He wants to have, us to have no other God but Him. Amen? So, those are my six thoughts about Christmas and uh, coming and going and what we need to do, but I wanted to talk to you. How many guys put a Christmas tree up this year? Anybody put a Christmas tree up? A few of you? How many went out and got a Christmas tree, a real one? Oh, one, two, three, few people, right? Well, that's what we do. We, uh, oh, look, I have one back here. Okay. It's not a real tree. It's a balloon tree. <laughs> Pretty cool, though, right? It's a nice tree. Well, what do we do? We, we take this tree and we give it a place of honor in our house, don't we? If you've got a big picture window that faces the street, and you're driving down a cold, uh, you know, a, a neighborhood. What do you usually see in the in the windows at Christmas time? The tree, right? So you decorate it. And look, sometimes you might even put a candy cane or two on it. I think I've got a candy cane I could push in here somewhere. And another one here. Candy canes. Oh, what else do we put on it? Uh, Sometimes a gingerbread man, right? I don't know if this will stay. Let me see if I can get this on here. <laughs> I just realized that's going to be really loud against the microphone on the internet there, but that's all right. All right. Uh, what else do we put on the Christmas tree? Oh, ornaments, right? Well, I mean, anything's an ornament. A uh, little tiny ornament here. Let me see if I can put this on here. Okay, let's see, where can we put this one? Uh, there, we'll hang it down at the bottom. Okay, there's one. Not much of an ornament. Oh, I got more though, unless they went down. There we go. There's a blue one. Here, pretend this has a handcrafted manger scene on it, hand-painted manger scene on it. Or not, that's all right, okay. Now we'll put this ornament up here at the top. And let's see, what else do we put on the tree? At the top of the tree goes a star usually, right? Okay, is that tree ready for Christmas now? 
maybe Christmas 2022, right? Because it's over now, but uh, let me see if I can fix this here. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you. All right. Well, Christmas morning, what do kids usually run to? Do they, do they hang out in the kitchen? No. They wait in their bedrooms? No. How many remember as a kid at Christmas, where did you want to go to? The tree. Why did you go to the tree? So we're presents under the tree, right? Isn't it amazing that the Bible says that cursed is a man who hangs on a tree? And the Bible also says that the cross is a tree. Deuteronomy 21, 23 says, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree, and the cross and the tree are the one and the same from God's perspective. Which leads to an interesting question. Where do we go in order to get the perfect gift of salvation? To the tree, not the Christmas tree, right? Uh, Christmas tree's nice. But what's going to happen with this Christmas tree uh, is at the end of Christmas... See if I can find it here. I brought a candy cane with me, a real candy cane. Uh oh, there it is. I've got a real candy cane here. After Christmas, if you've got a real tree, just like we saw in that video, what happens? Well, you've got to take the decorations off, right? That's a pretty sharp candy cane, isn't it? You ever eaten one of those candy? You lick it so much that it becomes sharpened to a point? Okay. Ow. I think I got myself on that one. All right. Yeah. So we take the decorations off of the tree. Oh, we've got to get the uh, garland off, too. That's a lot of garland. Oh, that's going to take forever. Okay. We'll just stop there. Okay. So all the garland comes off, and then you... Where do you put the decorations? You usually put them in a box, right? Well, I'm just using disposable decorations today, so I'm not doing that. But, so this, this beautiful thing that held a place of honor in your house now is stripped bare. And once it's stripped bare, I know my dad used to do, because we had a fireplace, and they always say, never burn your Christmas tree in the fireplace. Well, he did. He, he would cut off two or three branches at a time, put them in, and a whew, big, giant uh, wave of flame would shoot up. Not out, because he was very careful. And he would, he would get rid of the tree that way. But I'm going to get rid of the tree like this. Oh, wow. This is sad. It's all right, I got it. I think I can get rid of the tree like this. And yes, even though the tree is gone, when we run to the tree, the real tree, the cross of Jesus Christ, amen? amen. This, this brings us salvation. Not this balloon effigy here, but, you know, the real cross of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. That was the reason he came to Bethlehem, ladies and gentlemen. He didn't come like any of the Greek gods that came and, you know, were drunken and carousing and, and sired children in all the Greek mythologies. You know, every, every mythology has their gods behaving very badly. Christianity has the God that did not behave badly the one that lived the perfect life. And because he lived the perfect life, he was the perfect spotless lamb of God. And he alone was worthy to go to the cross to take my sin, your sin, because of what Jesus did, amen. We can have salvation. So let's remember that through this coming year. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for your goodness, your graciousness, and your gospel, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you saved us. Thank you that you came as a babe in Bethlehem.